guys it's rose welcome back to journeys in time welcome if you're new so today's video is obviously going to be a little bit different i am showing you my face for the first time ever just for this little bit <laughs> and we are going to be doing a craft room tour today so i will be talking a little bit about how i organize how i categorize things like that so hopefully you may get some ideas you it may start you thinking in a way that you hadn't been thinking before um and yeah let's get into it let's get started i'm going to turn the camera around i am going to go outside the door and we're going to start from the very beginning let's do it okay so this is the door to my craft room i have a beautiful wreath on it this was made by my friend danielle very talented lady so let's go through and guys, I am using my phone camera today, which is unusual. I've never used it for videoing before, so I hope it works out. The sound is very, very different in here, isn't it? Um, okay, so on the back of the door, I have another wreath, and these get swapped out. Uh, this I would normally have on the front of the door for spring, and the other one will come around. They're just on a string, and they just loop over the door. So that's those. So in this corner, this little chest is all of my personal papers, so we won't be looking at that. In here we have a light box, we have rolls of paper, anything that goes on a roll goes in here, so my heat and bond, my wax paper, everything like that, that's all in there. Then I have a tripod in the corner there, this is a guitar, <laughs> not crafty but it's there. Um, so down here I have a little bag and I call this my share bag, this is stuff that I have extras of and that I can put into happy mails and things like that. So up here along the top of these shelves, and I'm trying to go slowly so that I'm not making you guys seasick, okay? <laughs> okay, so on, top, on the top of these shelves, these bins, these are all my fabrics. So I have them categorized by color and also by kind of type. So lacy fabrics go in here, uh, embroidered pieces and things like that go in there, doilies, that kind of stuff. And then we we're into the colors we have pinks and peaches buffs neutrals and florals also go in there then we have blues blacks reds greens all that kind of stuff over there and right in the very very corner this bin here that is all my christmas craft stuff so when it comes time to christmas i'll just pull that bin out and i have all my craft my christmas stuff so i'm going to do a quick pen of the room for you guys so you can just see it is shelving all the ways around for the most part okay then we have a couple of large windows and more shelving here before we get back to the door. Okay, so we're going to start on this side, obviously, and I'm going to start with these four cubes. Okay, so in this one, I have just plain papers that I can use for tea dyeing and things like that. And when I say plain papers, I do mean like these are lined and boxed and all the rest of that. They're just generic paper okay so i have some watercolor paper in there as well i have lots of different types but it's all just plain papers now some of them are colored these are colored line pages things like that um i have my colored card stuff i don't have a whole lot of it because i don't use it a whole lot and i also have my file folders in here these are just a stack of old file folders that i managed to get my hands on and they live in there too so I'm going to go down to the next one with the door and in here I have just fancy, kind, fancier kind of papers. Now some of these are actually plain as well, I'm just realising, but most mostly they are decorated papers. They're not like 12 by 12 dedicated scrapbooking papers or anything like that, but they're just nice papers that I have found in local shops and things like that. And these were gifted to me. They're very pretty. They're Santoro very cute and in here i also have any glitter or foiled papers so they all live in there as well that is that cube close that one up and in the next one over here this is chocolate block <laughs> so i have 12 by 12s 6 by 6 pads 8 by 8 pads any kind of paper pads things like that or collections of paper um some of these actually came from magazines and things like that or local shops they might have been a pad of decorated paper so yeah all those kind of things live in there this hasn't been um sorted while i was doing my rejig i didn't sort this it does need sorting and there are a couple of areas around the room 
like that that while they're in the places that I want them um they are not the category itself isn't sorted okay so down to the next cube here I have all my tea dyed papers doilies anything that I have tea dyed and is ready to go they're all in there and this folder here is also this is end papers from books so when I go to book and take it apart I will save the end papers and put them in there and I love to use those so these four cubes comprise pretty much all of my paper which seems like very little but it's actually you know um there, there's quite a lot for me in there um it doesn't obviously comprise book pages and things like that there <laughs> that's a whole another thing um so categorizing and storing these papers you can see how i have done it i have done plain papers i have done fancy papers i have done scrapbooking papers and tea dyed papers so when i need paper i know that it's all in these four cubes and that just makes it easy for me to know where to put my hand to something okay so we're going to go down to the next four cubes and i'm going to get down on my knees here for you guys so the next four cubes they're all they're they're all different so i'm going to do this one and this one so in here i have tubs full of beads and tubs full of ribbons and trims okay so i have Okay, so for, for instance, this is a tub full of pink beads and jewellery bits and gems and things like that. And over here, I have a tub full of pink ribbons and trims and things like that, little gems and stuff like that. So for the most part, they are divided into gems and then ribbons and trims and things like that. There are one or two that might be mixed if I have very little of that colour. But for the most part, they are. And in here, like I have a purple, red and I think it's blue beads because I just didn't have enough so like the purple ones are in the tub the red ones are in a bag in the tub and the blue ones are also in a bag in the tub so that's how I organize those so if I want any beads or bling or things like that a particular color trim I know to come to here now there are some exceptions to this I have all of my white and cream trims all in one box I have blue a, a box for blue ones and a box for black and silver and that's simply because i had more of those and they required a box all of their own so that is that and in these drawers in drawer number one we have pins lots and lots of pins and i also have just some envelopes there that i use for actual postage as opposed to um junk journaling so that's where all of my pins and things like that live and in the next drawer down, I have all my sharp things and extra pliers and things like that. So knives, circle cutter, extra scissors, there's a staple remover in here, all those kind of things. They all go in here. So if I'm looking for something along those lines, I know to come to this drawer. That's that. Now the bottom two, and here is where we get into started in the books. Okay. So I have tried to categorize my books because I have quite a few books and I've tried to categorize them in the way that I would use them or in theme. So depending on what they actually are. OK, so over here I have books that I will primarily use as pages in journals. That's how I feel that I would use those books. OK, and we have all sorts of different kinds of things in here. We have old magazines fantastic um advertising and stuff like that i have a huge book here with some beautiful beautiful plates um it is about napoleon stunning book um i have lots and lots of different ones there so and here we have just some loose uh book pages again i would possibly use them for pages but it was this was just a way for me to store the loose ones that i had they will be used for ripping up and collage and things like that as well okay so here i have all of my nature books well no not all of my nature books most of them there is another cube of those over there and i will be showing you that in a little while but this category is all nature so you can see in the back if i pull these out all my edith holden books are in the back there and all of these are all nature whether it's plants birds bees butterflies that kind of stuff they're all in here okay so that's those bottom two and we're on to the next columns okay so up here i have more books this 
is all of my vintage ephemera. As you can see, I don't have a huge amount of vintage ephemera, but what I do have lives in here. There are also some Halloween bits back there because I just had a very small amount of them. They fit nicely in there and I know where to find them. So I have like books and <clears throat> little diaries. These things, I love these little diaries. This one is from 1913. There, it, there's an inscription on the front of it. There. 1913 and it is absolutely adorable it is embroidered on the front there's a little bit of writing in it not much this little one down here has a lot more writing in it <clears throat> and i have a little folder here with just old postcards things like that and in the next cube we have books again so these are categorized these are ones that i have very few in each category and they all live in here so we have music over here we have maps and atlases over here and in the center, these ones I would use primarily to take images from. And these ones I would use primarily to take words from. Words and quotes, things like that. And at the front here, I just have one each of the music and the atlas or map papers. Just for easy access. If I'm not looking for something specific, they're just handy there. Okay, so down to the next cubes. So we have a set of drawers here. And in this one, I have... Pretty much just envelopes. <laughs> there are some paper bags here as well and one or two little cards. But most of this is envelopes. Okay. Uh, so I'll never run out of envelopes, I don't think. Okay, so that is that one. And in the next drawer, we have just random extra things. <clears throat> so like this is a silver polishing cloth. I have some poly pockets here, blue tack staples, extra random stuff. And in the next one over... This cube gets used quite a bit. So these three tubs, uh, I worked in a factory at one point and with the, some of the things that we used came in these tubs and they were just being thrown in the bin. So I got quite a few of them. So they're very, very handy. They stack nicely. And in these ones, I have buttons in the top one. I have string and elastics and things like that in the next one down. And I have anything to do with playing cards or game cards, things like that in here. And this folder, this is a new uh, addition to my craft room. So in here I have like, it's got lots of those little pockets and each pocket belongs to a theme. So there's one for Alice in Wonderland. There's one for Flapper Girls. There's one for Gothic, you know, things like that. If So if I have something specific to a theme, um, it goes in here so that I have collections of things for that theme. So if I if I decide to work on an Alice in Wonderland theme, I know that I can go here and all the stuff that is specific to Alice in Wonderland is in here and I can pull from the rest of my stash as needed. OK, so that's those. This here is just a collection of bits that I'm putting aside for a friend. So the next one's down. Now, again, this is a new addition to my craft room and one that I'm hoping will work well for me. So in here I have tracing paper and any kind of see-through or translucent papers. So tracing papers, bake, baking papers, all that sort of stuff there in this pouch and the book behind. In this folder here, and I'm not going to pull out these folders for you guys because <laughs> it's hard to do it one-handed. Okay, so in this one I have napkins. So all my napkins live in here. Not all my napkins, but all... I have one of every, at least one of every type of napkin that I have in here. So if I'm looking for napkins, I just pull this out, flip through it and find what I want. In here, I have all my doilies. I thought it was just a better way to store them so they weren't getting damaged. Now, the ones on top are quite large and <laughs> if they get pulled in and out too much, they may get damaged. So I might have to rethink those ones. But for the most part, I think I will keep my doilies in there. In here, I have what I call fun papers. So I have packaging papers. I have decorated craft papers. I have that paper came from a uh, gift bag. So uh, anything like that. There are also actually some paper bags in there. If they're just kind of big pieces of paper that I can use to collage or things like that they all go in there and this one this big fat one and I was shocked at how fat this one got <laughs> these are just tissue papers so all different colors of tissue papers very little decorated tissue paper but lots and lots of different colors of it I don't know where I got all this stuff from and my sewing tissue is sewing pattern tissue is in here as well so they live in there 
This is my Tim Holtz tissue paper and it is this one if you are interested. Hope that shows up okay there. Um, so that's that and in here are the extra napkins. So I have like one or two of each in here and the rest of them are in here. Okay, so next one over we have all of my zodiac journals so if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that we do a draw for a zodiac journal every month and they all live in here so that's that bottom row and in here we have more books so in the back those are all vintage children's books and in the front we have all irish themed books and ephemera over here so to me, Irish or Celtic is a, a category all of its own, probably because I'm Irish. <laughs> OK, and in the next one over, we have all the different pack packaging pieces. So we have bubble wraps and brown paper to wrap things. We have large envelopes and post boxes and things like that in there. OK, so up we go. And in here I have my personal journals and just some office paper that I can pull out and write on at any point. My beautiful clock. I love this thing. And down here we have, uh, this is a box of prompts or prompts, props. <laughs> so things that I can use for photographs and things like that. Um, it's just a few bits and pieces in there. In here, I have all my extra equipment for cameras and things like that, ring light and just some office equipment here. This is all personal stuff up here. So on this desk, I have my Cricut and my laser printer. And that's pretty much it that's on this desk. Uh, this is also, this is a journal that I made a long time ago and I'm thinking to maybe do something else with it and yeah that I'm just leaving it there to remind myself that I want to get on with that this is my old glass mat that I did use for a long long time in my videos you may recognize it I have recently got a new one and I'm not sure I like it so this one might be making a comeback we'll have to wait and see I'd like to hear what you guys think as well if you have noticed the new mat um let me know if you prefer the the new one or the older one in here I have just fussy cuts, things that I need to fussy cut. So they're all in there with scissors and things like that. I can take this out to the couch and do that out there. And these are just books that I am taking words out of at the moment. And under this desk, we have packaging boxes. This is another light box and this is a fold out table. So if I need an extra table surface, I have that. And over here, this black box is all of my journals and makes. They're all in there. There isn't a whole lot in there at the moment. I sold most of them. And down on the bottom, that box down there is empty. And as you can see, there are lots of weights and things like that in here as well. I use those for weighting down papers, all that kind of stuff if I need it. And a big tangle of wires as well. <laughs> okay, so on to the next lot of shelves. Now, in front of this set of shelves you will see this piece of furniture here it houses my sewing machine so i got this piece of furniture ever before i had a craft room and it was very very useful at the time for keeping my sewing machine out of the way and things like that and i love this piece of furniture it comes from horn furniture company in the uk and it is amazing it's got a pneumatic lift on the sewing machine so it goes down into the cabinet and the two flaps close down i'm trying to train myself to not use it as a surface so that's why it's left like that at the moment so that is my sewing machine but it is very um accessible to me from where i sit for my crafting as well so that's good and up higher we have okay let's go in here a little bit this is my typewriter, just a bag that I was gifted, very pretty corset bag, I love it. They're just um, random bits and pieces, personal bits and pieces. So some of the shelves up here are all personal, we won't be going near those. There are some over further that uh, I will be showing you guys. So next shelf down, we have printer paper and card and things like that. Anything that I would put through my printer is here. So we have labels and all sorts of stuff in there. And next one over is my Big Shot and my Cuttlebug and all their plates. 
And next one down, I have mark making and art paper. So anything that I would use for mixed media work or drawing or anything like that, that's in there. So the mark making, you, you can see that's never going to be a tidy category, is it? <laughs> and the next one over is very similar. It's got a lot of um, bits and pieces for, you know, jelly printing and things like that. OK, that's that. So as you can see from what we have looked at so far, I try to keep like with like. And I also try to think about how I would search for something if, if I'm looking for something in particular. What what is it that I look for? Do I look for a book page or do I look for a book page that I can use as a, a page in a journal? Things like that. So that's how I try to categorize and I try to keep all those things together. And with the likes of the tissue papers and stuff in, in this cube here, they're all similar to me. In my mind, they're all similar. They're see-through, they're ephemeral, they're light papers that um I would use. So they all kind of stay together. So things like that <clears throat> might be worth thinking about. Okay, so I have moved my sewing machine out of the way so that we can get in here. And you will see why I put this stuff particularly back here behind the sewing machine because I knew this would work. This is just a box of empty cartridges. I need to sort those out and get them recycled. Just empty folders for extra storage, all extra storage stuff there. These are art journals and things, my own art journals and things like that, coloring books, things like that. I don't do, I don't get to do a whole lot of art journaling these days. So they're behind there for now. Uh, this is actually full of my Zen tangles. Down here, I have chemicals like glycerin, alcohol, that kind of stuff. They're all in there. In here is just all extra storage pieces. Okay, so that's what's behind the sewing machine. So I'm going to get that put back in place and I'll be back. Okay, so we'll go on to the next cubes. And up here in this one up here, this is all just extra, I want to say machinery, <laughs> but that's not the word. <laughs> extra things. Um, so my laminator, wood burning tool, uh, label maker and engraving machine. This is a punch system as well. So they're all in there. That box at the back is just an empty box and I have a few empty storage boxes around the place just because I like to have them on a hand. OK, so that's in there. In the next one over, I call this my inspiration box. And this is a new thing in my craft room as well. Anything that I couldn't really categorize, but I thought was cool or sparked something, uh, some sort of an idea, they all go in here. Or things that I like, like National Geographic magazines, I love them. Uh, I don't use magazine images in my journals so much these days, but I don't want to get rid of them. And I will use them for jelly printing and things like that. So they're in my inspiration kind of uh, cube as well. So lots and lots of different things, just random little things like this. You know, things that might spark an idea. OK, so in the next cubes, we have all my knitting supplies and crochet supplies are up there. And in the next one down, we have calligraphy supplies and what little supplies I have left over from my jewellery making days. And this is a cross stitch kit. So pretty much kind of these two cubes are other crafts that I like to do. OK, so that's those two. So down we go. And in this cube, I have all of my watercolor type products. So watercolor paints, brushes, neo colors, things like that. And then we have over here, these are just little extra paints that I couldn't fit in the other cube. So they're just like children's paints. I use them on the jelly plate as well. We have markers and crayons and all sorts of um, coloring equipment in there. OK. And over here, we have all my acrylic paints, lots and lots of acrylics in there. And uh, down in the next cube down, we have sprays and colour pencils. I think these are watercolour pencils, actually. My large set of Faber-Castell colour pencils. Uh, we have some gel pens, things like that. Um, so those three cubes are all about colour and getting colour onto things. So if I'm looking for a colouring medium, 
I go to one of these three cubes. Now there are obviously other things like inks, they're stored elsewhere and I will show you that in a second and explain that. So over here in this cube we have all of my extra glues and tapes and things like that. And down here these are those tubs that I was talking about. These ones have blue trims, laces, things like that. This one has black and silver trims and laces and things like that. This one is a bit um, of an anomaly <laughs> because I had nowhere else to put it and I need to label it. It's got cupcake liners and wooden embellishments. And I know that is, there is no like with like in there, but I was at the end of the, the rejig and I could not figure out another way to store them or a place to put them so for now they're in there I may have a brainwave about it I think I was um all decisioned out at that point <laughs> so they're in there anyway so these this is a bag of like leather pieces uh, that come off of bags or boots and things like that not just leather there's lots of different kind of embellishment pieces in there that come off of things like that i have all my acetate not all my acetate i have a selection of acetate pieces in here easy to grab over here i have all of the things that i would build a cover with a journal cover so there's my cradle my binding cradle and my binding tools are in here we have book covers that can be altered that are ready to go this is a frame that I thought might look cool on the front of a cover so that these I use for ridges in the spine all that sort of thing things that I would use to build a cover with okay so next cubes down this basket is one that I just acquired recently don't know how I want to use it yet so it's just sitting there for now down here I have <clears throat> excuse me extra bits and bobs I have my iron extra candles sanding sponges things like that just extra tools I guess over here I have the toners for my printer I have tea bags and this is a bag of walnut crystals so excuse me th that's where all of those are and let's get back up again okay so going around the corner here we have the window and we have smudge hello Baba. Uh, so smudge is sitting in a box on top of my scanner <laughs> um, This was not designed it was not meant to be but uh, I happened to get some happy mail one of the days and just landed the box up here and the cats seem to love it So it's been there ever since uh, Yeah, so my scanner is It is actually a printer uh, an inkjet printer. It doesn't work very well anymore, but the scanner works really well so that's there and over here we have what I call the pressing station. So this is where I press my flowers. This is also where I will put things in between these books to flatten out as they dry, things like that. Okay, uh, so this bin here, this is kind of scrap papers, but it's not really scrap either. These are larger pieces that I will go to. This is one of the first bins that I will go to when I'm looking for something. And they're categorized into solid colors, patterns, plain paper, buff cardstock and tea dyed paper. Okay, so that's kind of very used in my craft room. Uh, these here, we have an ideas book that I'm not very good about filling. <laughs> and this is a book of pockets. I can just, I have all these pages folded into pockets and I can just pull them out and use them in my journals. Some nonstick mats. And I'm going to go back here and go down under this table. So under here I have fun foam and things like fun foam i thought these um numbers might be cool on the front of a journal i don't know <laughs> but i don't want to get rid of them just yet <laughs> then we have all my cardboard and i have this categorized as well so i have this nice brown card that i like to use this cereal box card then i have amazon packaging you know those little envelope folders uh this is the gray cereal box card and then I have some chipboard back here and a very small amount of corrugated card because I don't use it a whole lot these days. That may change again. In the front I have, oh yeah, that's actually more brown card. And these are smaller offcuts. Okay, so I will go to those first before I pull out a new big sheet. Um, over here I have leather scraps. These came from... A leather, work a leather workshop in the city just up the road from me. That was in the scraps bin up there. So I grabbed those. 
these are fabric scraps they're not teeny tiny scraps but they're not actual full pieces of fabric either and in the back i have some handbags and things like that that i'd like to do something with at some point so yeah that's it under that table okay and up here uh, I'll do the table first. So this little box here, I call this current considerations. So anything in here is something that I'm currently working with or like, for instance, this is our Virgo journal that we are, that, that, that will be drawn at the end of August. So that's the one that we're currently working with. And these are bits that need to be put away, stuff that I want to scan and stuff that I haven't yet figured out a place for. So they all need to be kind of dealt with pretty much straight away there's no big deal with them but you know these are things that i want to get done soon okay so moving up here in here i have mm -hmm, a fantastic this is an old letter holder and i love this thing i love it so i have a selection of envelopes out here uh, i have tag bases things that could be used just as is or that i would want to alter some of them are ones that i have made and need further altering I have library pockets. I have packaging that I think would make good ephemera. Uh, all that kind of thing. I have paper bags over here. Larger envelopes back here. These are actually my sliders. They don't belong in there and they will be moved. And larger envelopes back there. Words and numbers in here. So that is that kind of letter holder. It holds an awful lot of stuff and I love it. Okay, so moving up, all my extra glues are up here. These are the glues that I'm currently using mostly. And I will go up, I think. So as you can see, I have a magnetic board on the wall for my dies. They're all very easily accessible to me. And that is another thing that is important to me in my craft room. Things need to be accessible. If I have to go digging for something, I won't it just won't get used so that's why i like to have kind of everything around me and accessible and that is the whole reason for this next unit as well so first of all let's talk about these little tiny tea pots aren't they adorable look at those things so i wanted to have these out on display somehow and this was the best way i could do it this one back here has no lid so it's got little hairpins jeweled hairpins sticking out of it and that's i love it uh feathers sticking out of the spouts these are random feathers that you know i only have one or two of so they all got sticking out of the spouts and i think it looks adorable um this is a little silver castle that i made <laughs> um my tower brooch that i love so the unit itself and i'm just going to pull out my chair so that i can get a good angle here for you guys the unit itself is <sighs> As you can see full of little drawers so so useful and handy for keeping lots and lots of things close to hand so i have things like book corners metal embellishments these are larger embellishments and cabochons so they're kind of random no real uh, category for them so they go together and in here i have decorative breads Wax seals, chain and jump rings, eyelets, plain breads, kind of semi decorative breads. <laughs> so I have three drawers of breads. I like my breads. And in the bottom drawer, we have charms. So it's pretty much all metal bits, except for the wax seals, I think. Um, yeah, so I love having this unit here. I think it will make it so much easier for me to use these bits and pieces. So that is working out really, really well. Okay, so um, close to the side of that, we kind of bypass this a little bit. This folder here holds tiny scraps. Okay, scraps of paper. We have scraps of fabrics and trims in there as well. Scraps of napkins and also some die cut pieces that didn't make it into whatever project I had cut them for in the first place. 
Okay, so just random scrappy bits that uh, I can just pull from and use. These are this is just a selection of book pages just to have close to hand. So when this is um when this runs down, I will just replenish it from the pile that I have across the way. And under here, I have two little boxes full of tiny things. This one has a lot of tiny labels and stuff like that in there. A lot of Tracy Fox's teeny labels go in there. Uh, as well as other stuff and in this one I have some strips of coats and things like that and um, they're just smaller than the other ones that I have in the envelope across the way so they go in there I also have a box of jewelry findings uh, so we have lobster clasps and things like that in there straight pins stuff like that and in the next one down we have some metal bookmarks and paper clips decorative paper clips so they are in there Okay, so next over we have just blank card bases. So these are greeting cards bases. We have record cards. We have a book of postcards. These are project life cards that I will probably alter, you know, all that kind of stuff. In the front, I have some tags and tiny tags, stuff like that. So they're basically blanks that um, I will pull from, okay? This jar back here is my jar of tiny, tiny fabric scraps. That's in there. My bottle of water and my yes paste there behind that. And I'm going to back up a little bit and just show you. This is my usual camera setup. Okay, so this is where I craft. And that's where you guys get to see me. And that is clamped on to this wooden stool back here. It was the only way that I could make it work because there's such a, a, a large space between the edge of my desk and the windowsill. Uh, my, I have two magic arms here kind of screwed together and even that didn't fit. So we had to come up with something else and that was what we came up with. But it does give me the opportunity to have my pretty flowers and some cute little bits here. I have a faux Fabergé egg in there that was gifted to me, a little crystal peacock. And over here we have a little kitty cat statue that is made from Irish bog oak. I love that thing. Underneath there we have my glue gun. That just leaves there. It doesn't get used very often. So, so we have a plug bank back there. In these ones we have lots of different metal closures and things like that. Now I did actually have the wax seals in those jars. But they didn't all want to fit in there. So that's why I swapped them out. I had the metal um, these ones. I had those in the drawer across the way, but uh, yeah, it just worked better this way for me. And this, hmm, this is my desk and you will have seen bits and pieces of this. And this is really the heart of the craft room, okay, of my craft room. And this and underneath here is a set of drawers as well, which I will go through with you guys. But this is the bit that I really wanted to talk to you about. So I have on my desk a lot of little caddies and cubbies and this includes that unit there, okay? And inside in those caddies and cubbies, I have lots and lots of different bits and pieces. And the idea behind these is that if I have it on my desk close to hand and I can see it, I'll think to use it. I have an awful problem of putting things away forgetting that I have them and never using them. Things that would have inspired me and inspire me every time I come across them, but then I forget to use them. So I figure if I keep a few bits and pieces out on my desk, it will um, help inspire my work. Okay, so in here, in this one, and these things hold an awful lot. And I have to say, actually, thank you so much to Linda McCarthy. Linda gifted me, I think it was this particular one, and it was that gift that prompted me to do it this way. And... It's working so, so well for me. So, Linda, big thank you to you, my love. So, this, they contain an awful lot. Back here, I have a stand for my phone. My phone can sit up here, and if I want to watch videos while I'm crafting, it's perfect. Um, I have just cardboard pieces just to grab to hand. I have a die cut piece there. I have some buttons. I have pens. I have little diamante pieces. I have stickers. I have name plates, trims paper clips, die cuts, nameplate die cuts and things like that, string and lace, buttons, more string, paper clips, stamps, labels, hole reinforcers. Over here I have ribbon and trim as well, lace, 
um, I have all my bulldog clips very close to hand and very useful. Metal embellishments from Tim Holtz and some safety pins. And I'm going to skip across to this one. And in this one I have more labels, wooden embellishments, some gems, things like that. These are the paint chips that I actually did recently in one of my videos. Some paper ruffles, some bows, random die cuts, punched flowers and hearts in there. And I also have those discs, one inch discs. I cut those from, let's say I'm cutting ephemera from a digital kit and I have some carried left over. I will cut discs from them and I use them all the time. A feathery bit that I want to use somewhere. don't know where I want to use it yet. That just stays in there. So you can see there's um, a huge amount, a huge array of different things right in front of me and it makes it so much easier to craft so much easier and this is the piece there is resistance in my craft room this is a caddy that i made a long time ago i made this ooh, roughly seven years ago from um just a cardboard box and some tubes i put it all together and it was sitting on my desk in various different kind of formats over the years uh, but i recently got myself a lazy susan and my lord this thing is a game changer guys a game changer and as you can see i have another one of those little units here as well so in here i have my distress inks vintage photo and things like that that i use most often i have my daubers i have my little glue bottles my glue stick some i, I want to say tea dye spray but it's not actually tea dye this is a distress ink spray that i made up myself with just re reinkers and some water i have my stapler in there i have some thread I also have some sandpaper back here and a stamp block. Okay, so very, very handy little station there. So we go around, large bottle of glue because that just won't fit in my shelf up there. All of my scissors, my rotary cutter. I have a letter opener here. I have ink brushes, my box cutters, my bone folder. These are my thinning scissors tweezers and pokey tools up here i have other uh, small brushes and soft brushes for various different things i have a toothbrush back here for spattering palette knives all sorts of things in there and this is i'm assuming it's supposed to be like a paper clip uh don't know how vintage it is it was a find in a market and i love it i think it's awesome that sits there uh on the next side, I have a little pouch for my rag and I've started using a cloth as opposed to baby wipes. I want to stop using baby wipes if possible. I do still have some in my room, but I will try to be trying to use this more often than not. So on the next side, we have some tapes. So I have some double sided tape and some masking tape there. I have pens sandpaper that's a fine grit sandpaper and down here is a heavier grit pencils scoring tools lighter that's a burnisher that i used to use for um metal work uh, but i do use it in the craft room sometimes i have my water brushes and some paint markers tiny ruler uh, an eraser my cards like credit cards and things like that that we use for scraping and oh yeah also in here i have my embossing pouch very handy to have that there so that is that unit and it swivels nice and freely and it keeps all of my tools to hand and tidy and i love it this has been a game changer for me it really has okay so if you can get your hands on a lazy susan and do something like this i highly recommend it uh, it takes up a lot less room on your desk and all of these little compartments really, really help to keep your pieces organized. OK, I love it. OK, so back behind that, I have a little tin with taller glues and things like that that won't fit anywhere else. And there's an extra stapler in there and my brayer also lives in there. And over here, I have all my boards. So I have scoreboard. No, sorry, I don't. That, that That's the one board that isn't in there is a scoreboard. I have cutters. I have my stamp platform i have my envelope punch board uh, i have a cutting board and i actually have a smaller cutting board in there as well this is a small glass mat and i have a small silicone mat there as well and they all live in there and i didn't think that that would work for me but it really does it keeps them close to hand they're actually easy enough to pull in and out which i didn't think they would be and that is really working for me as well so as you can see 
my desk looks really really tidy but yet i have all of the things that i need to have up there up there okay so i'm really really pleased with how that is working out at the moment okay so down here um and we have one set of drawers in here and this is a set of drawers that has been over and back and over and back in my craft room. It's been here and it's been across the way and it's been back here again. It's been back across the way. <laughs> but I decided I needed to have it here. OK, so on top, we just have some scratch papers. I will just pull this if I need to stamp off a stamp or if I'm heat embossing, I need something to put my put under my piece, things like that. So in here we have my heat tool and my straight iron. And they, um, the wires actually go out the back of this drawer and plug in across the way. And that just keeps them to hand and keeps them out of my way as well. <clears throat> and they pull out, the, the wires can pull out and then be put away again. And don't worry about the heat. If I just leave them hang outside the drawer for a few minutes to cool down, it's totally fine. Okay, so next drawer down, we have punches. I have my corner rounders my circle punch things like that in there to hand again everything is close to hand and accessible down here i have all my inks so we have distress inks and they're all categorized into um their own kind of groups so we have distress oxides distress inks here the ones that aren't already on the desk archival inks dye based inks and towards the back i have pigment inks because i don't use them as much my extra Stamp blocks are in here as well. So that one is actually tough enough to close up. I must um, rejig that. And in the bottom drawer, I just have some of this paper towel and some baby wipes. So that's what lives down there. Let's put that back out of the way. Uh, you'll also see over here my bin and my scoreboard is down here. And this here is just a vintage set of stamps that was used for sign making. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so on to the next lot of shelves. We're nearly done. We're nearly at the end. Okay, so up here I have ephemera pieces that I have made and are ready to go or that are just actual ephemera pieces that are ready to go into a journal. Uh, in front I have my Inca goals, very handy, very close to me so I can access them very easily. Back here I have my larger paintbrushes, uh, some gesso, wax acrylic and matte gel medium. They're things that I kind of reach for often enough. So they live there. And I am going to go down, I think, as opposed to going up to the top of over there. And down here I have, this is a box full of die cuts. There's all sorts of different die cuts in here and also some extra circle discs and things like that. They're all in there. My crossfire markers, they stay there because all of my wax sealed stuff is in this box. This box is all my heat embossing stuff. I have foils over here, my rulers, uh, a paintbrush that I use for painting on that distress ink dye that I made up in the bottle and more foils down here. Okay, so that is that cube. Oh, and over here I have a book that I will just roll any extra paints or inks and things like that. I'll roll all that off on th there. And these are just sheets of contact paper that I use as nonstick sheets. Okay. <clears throat> so down here in the next cube, these little folders have all of my labels, die cuts, things like that. So all of these ones are pretty much nature. Um, these all need to be resorted and things like that as well. I was using these. These are ones that um, I had tried to use for storage and it didn't work. So I folded them and cut them and made them into a different format and they work okay but they're too small um and they don't hold enough pieces in one book i don't know that may or may not make sense to you but i want to change those out for all these type of kind of photograph albums okay so i'm gathering those i have some more of them there so they will house anything to do like fussy cuts and things like that all smaller pieces go into these. I also have these two little booklets here. Uh, one of them is for just butterflies and one of them is just for birds. So I will know if I want something to do with butterflies, I can go to these or birds, I can go to these. These ones are the ones that have the labels and tags and things like that in them. So again, if I'm looking for something like that, I know to go to these two books. And then we have my crocodile. Okay. 
Now back up to the top. So on these top shelves here, these are works in progress. They're, they're journals and things like that that I haven't managed to get finished. This next shelf down, this is all random small tools that I want to have close to hand. So I have my circle cutter there. This is a handheld sewing machine. I have my scotch tape there, magnets, uh, staplers, reinkers, things like that. They all live in there. Next shelf down, I have my teeny tiny die cutter, die cut machine. And I reach for that thing all the time. So yeah, that's very handy, very close to me and very easily pulled out. These tubs here, again, they have more, they have larger pieces of ephemera. So they these are themed. You can see on this one, it says travel, exploration and transportation. So I have another one that's labeled people and portraits. I have a botanical one. I have an animal one. And they're also categorized into things like collage and layering. So I would use specific pieces for layering. So pieces that I would use for that go into this box. Collage pieces, um, they're just scraps that I, I imagine that I would use for collage. That may be going, I'm not sure yet, because I have a scrap bin over there and, you know, it might be super, superfluous. This one is all embellishments. So strips of sticker, sticker strips that would edge a page, things like that. They're all in there. Next cubes down, we have those extra nature books that I spoke about. Um, and this was not intended to be all nature books, but it just ended up like that. I thought I would put some some favorites over here and have them close to me so I could just pull from them. So yeah, they ended up being mostly nature. So that's that. Um, this is also an old ledger. I, I love it and it's the only one I have. So I'm kind of a bit precious about using it, which I really need to not be, but you know, it is what it is. Over here, I have my cream and white laces and trims and there's two boxes for that obviously I have a lot of that these are some jelly prints and they are actually the prints of my most recent release in my Etsy shop the the sliders that's what's in there specimen sliders so next one down we have now this does need a bit of redigging this this um system Okay, these two are fine. We have stencils and embossing folders in these two top boxes. This is a stamp album and it's got lots of stamps in it. That's where I keep all my stamps. These two folders are my rubber stamps and clear stamps and they really need rejigging. I like the system and I've done a video on that system, um, but I think I need to categorize my stamps better. When I was doing it, I just put them in as they came and I didn't categorize them at all. And I'm not really enjoying that, having to look through them all and all the rest of that. I want to know that if I want a butterfly, I have all the butterflies in one place. So, yeah, that needs redoing. In here, I have some extra stamps that won't fit into that system, like their foam stamps, things like that. That's what's in there. This is something that I started recently. And I will pull it out and show you. It was an idea that I saw somebody do on YouTube. And what it is, is sheets of tissue glued into the book and then stamped on so that I can rip out a stamped image and glue it onto a page and it looks as though it was stamped. So yeah, so I would just rip out <coughs> a stamp, glue it down to the page and it looks like it was just stamped, but I don't have the um, worry of the, the ink bleeding through the page, which is something that I really struggle with and don't like. So that is those. And there's another little uh, stamp album thing in there. I think that's it. I'll leave that out. I won't try to get that back in. Now, before we go over to the further corner, I'm going to show you down here. Under my desk, I have two baskets. This one has a folder with digitals, digital prints in it. And over there, I have a selection of background stamps and small stamps. They're kind of handy generic ones that I could use pretty much on any project. Um, so they live in there, so they're useful. And these ones, these prints, are just again like that generic prints that would kind of work with a lot of different themes and things like that so they live in there and under here they're photo album pages but i haven't decided how i want to use that yet that's a, a new acquisition so yeah i will be using it for something very useful so down here this is how i store my washi tapes and they're on lanyards and they're right beside me so they're easy to use uh, easy to look through and I have three lanyards full. I think I have enough. <laughs> That's those. And here I have a ring with just a couple of dangles on. Usually I make dangles as I go 
but I want to kind of build up a stash of them. So these are two that I made recently with the paint chips and I will be adding to that. And under my desk here, I have a selection of card and things like that that I will use for die cutting specifically. Uh, back here, I have a box full of rags and drop cloths and things like that. And over here in this bag, uh, is leather pieces so reclaimed leather from like my brother was throwing out a couch and I went and I cut the leather from the back of it and kept that so that's what's in there okay so that is all of those and we have another cozy cat bed here because you know I have four cats and they like their cozies and they like to be with their mama okay and on to the very last bit up here these had these holes all had hooks in them at one point but i've taken them out to reuse them elsewhere it didn't really work for me they were hidden from sight and not to hand so they're not being used for anything this trim needs to go into my teams folder uh i particularly want it for a project so yeah that needs to be categorized this was a gift i need to find somewhere to put that and obviously another gift <laughs> from one of the grandbabies and down here, I just have a selection of sprays and things like that, varnishes and things like that. This is some hairspray, all that sort of stuff. And I have texture paste and things like that down here as well. It's more texture paste, clear gesso. I don't use it very, very often, but it's there. It's nice to have it. That's just a little radio. And I think, guys, that that is pretty much it. So you've seen all of my craft room. I hope I have given you some tips and tricks and things like that. There's my chair. That's that's the chair that I sit in all the time. I hope that I've given you some ideas for storage and organizing and things like that. Um, and that I just haven't bored the pants off you guys. <laughs> so that is it for today. I will leave you with that beautiful wreath on the back of my door. And I will talk to you all very, very soon. Bye, guys.